8.2 million people died of cancer worldwide in 2012. However, in 2030, 283 million people will die of cancer. This means that current methods used to treat cancer are clearly not working. An example is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is used to target the bad cells and kill them. However, in actuality, through the process of chemotherapy, chemotherapy actually ends up killing a lot of the good cells used to improve the human body. One in six Canadians will die of cancer if we continue to use these, these methods, such as chemotherapy, to treat cancer. Cancer is only one of the genetic diseases that affect millions of people in our world today. By 2030, 365 million people will die of cancer and other uh, genetic diseases. Millions of dollars are put into building tools to, uh, to treat uh, genetic diseases ranging from cardiovascular diseases to um, neuro neurodegenerative diseases. And also these tools end up being not as efficient and not even curing the disease. That's why we created Curacle. Curacle, the mission of Curacle is to, is to solve and cure all gen genetic dise diseases in our body. And it does this through one tool. This tool leverages the technology of CRISPR and nanotechnology. And it does this as we first, as most of you guys know, CRISPR is a gene editing tool. But what you guys don't know is that CRISPR actually faces a lot of problems. And one of these problems is off-target effects. So in gene editing, we, we enable CRISPR to actually remove the bad genes in certain cells. But with off-target effects, suppose you, we want to use CRISPR to tar target and remove the bad gene in a sickle cell. But with off-target effects, the CRISPR actually goes and removes a gene in another cell. And this is a huge problem, as it can be harmful as CRISPR, CRISPR can attack some of the good cells. Another problem is our body recognizes CRISPR as a foreign invader. This means that CRISPR is actually not able to execute its task and actually <coughs> execute its task in uh, removing the bad genes and the bad cells. However, in order to fix this, what we did is we encapsulated the CRISPR with a DNA origami. And essentially what this DNA origami does is that it is able to deliver the CRISPR to the right target cell. And this is because surrounding the DNA origami are receptors. And these receptors allow for the direct transition for the CRISPR to the target cell. However, there's one slight issue. The issue is that our body recognizes the DNA origami as a foreign invader as well. So in order to make our body know that in order to make our body use this CRISPR and have the CRISPR directly linked to the target cell, we have to make the target cell, um, we have to, we have to, our body has to look at the target cell and the DNA origami and, uh, and, be, and, and what we have to do is we have to, so, so essentially, um, we, want to we want our body to think that the, um, the DNA origami is a part of the body. And if we want our body to think that the DNA origami is part of the body, it has to be, it has, we have to um, encode this DNA origami and apply proteins from white blood cells on the DNA origami. So essentially, our body thinks that this system is a part of our body and will actually accept this. And so essentially what we want to do with this product is we want to take it orally. But if we have to take it orally, it has to first go through our digestive system. When it goes through our digestive system, we want it to essentially go to the circula circulatory system so the CRISPR can, target, can go to the target cells. But there's actually a barrier, and this barrier is the receptor. And this receptor actually prevents, only, act, only allows nutrients to go to the circulatory system which is why it is crucial that we have the proteins of the white blood cells cover the DNA origami so our body, so then it actually tricks our body into thinking that this is a protein. And this actually allows the CRISPR and the DNA origami to go into the circulatory system to target the right cells. However, I've talked about the CRISPR targeting bad cells and the bad genes in the cells. But what CRISPR can actually do is target and is to is enhance the good cells. For example, clotho. Clotho increases our cognitive functions. So if we enhance and if we increase clotho in our body, we're actually able to be healthier and 
have a, have a better system into our body. So essentially CRISPR was the use of DNA origami and white blood cells to disguise it. We we're actually able to target the bad cells and remove the bad cells in the, the bad genes in the cells. We we're actually also able to enhance the good cells and the good genes in the cells. We also have the world's smartest people supporting us on our journey. For example, I am currently researching anti-CRISPR with Professor Alan Davison at the University of Toronto Molecular Genetics and School of Medicine to actually ensure that our CRISPR in Kirikul is the most optimal, precise, safe, and deliverable to various cells in our body. Last week, I also picked up my phone and called Professor George Church, who is, by the way, the leading molecular geneticist in our world today, to ensure that artificial white blood cell is the world's first leading strategy to allow us to deliver the CRISPR into the body. I also have support from Farrah Kaiser, who's currently a master of molecular genetics, and she's working at SickKids Hospital, who will help us if we move forward in the next five to 10 years in the clinical trial phase, among many other amazing and talented people. Further validation comes from Google Venture. Google Venture, among other VCs in North America, is allocating $31 million, literally a third of their venture capital, into companies like life sciences and healthcare with the hope that these healthcare and life sciences company will become the next meta corporation. The next meta corporation. Specifically, they're, target, they're targeting companies that are working on CRISPR and stem cell therapies along with gene therapies, which happen to be what Kirikul is working on today. There are many case studies that Kirikul is aiming to cure. The first one is exophageal cancer. By editing only one gene, the PD-1 gene, in the T cell, we're able to program the T cell to target the cancer cells better and push them towards apoptosis. Another disease we are able to cure is leukemia. So by adding only one gene, we help push these blood cancer cells towards apoptosis faster and help the patient to be healthy better. Finally, we want to cure Crohn's disease. So today, one in six people have Crohn's disease. If we assume that this room has 30 people, literally five of you will die of Crohn's disease. <laughs> <laughs> By using CRISPR to edit this gene in the T cells, we allowed it to suppress inflammation and counteract the detrimental effects of Crohn's disease. Overall, we as a human species are coming towards this realization that CRISPR is going to become one of the most powerful tools in the next century. Curigal is the first company that are also solving all of CRISPR problems like off-target effects, and we're the first one to use artificial white blood cell as a strategy to solve these problems. In the next five to 10 years, Curigal's mission is to become the world's first off-the-shelf gene therapy producer that will help cure all genetic diseases and help you live a longer and better life. Right now, we're recruiting smart, talented, and driven people to join our company. With us, we can create a new universe of gene-based therapies together to save billions of people worldwide, including yourself. Thank you.